And I'm going to talk to you about research software engineering. Um, the story starts for me about 10 years ago when I was job hunting. I've made, been made redundant. I've got a bit of an odd career path, which you're welcome to ask me about if you're interested. And I saw this advert for open source software coordinator for advanced textile composite materials. And um, essentially, they were looking for a software engineer with a PhD and a background in composite materials. And it was the third time they'd advertised because there aren't many of those around. But I am one of those. Um, so I got the job and have been working since then on this software called TextGen, which is for modeling of textiles and textile composites. And if you're interested, you can ask me about that as well. Um, and so I beeped away as I'd applied for a job as a software engineer. And um, after a little while, I realized that actually um, have my sort of uh, reviews and whatever, and realised that although I was employed as a software engineer, I was actually a research fellow. And the metric by which my um, things were assessed were how many papers have you produced? Well, I haven't because I'm writing software and my output is software. And so there's this sort of mismatch and you're also reliant on um, research funding. Um, if your research funding runs out, then you'll be made redundant. Um, so I was sort of thinking, I'm not sure where I can go with this. Um, I'm not going to get promoted because I haven't got enough papers. Um, but unbeknownst to me, at the same time, EPSRC, the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, had been putting together this software as an infrastructure strategy. And um, essentially, EPSRC plan millions into high performance computing facilities and research projects, and they realised that um, a lot of the output is actually software. And typically, when the, soft, when the researcher leaves, their computer gets, if it's just on a desktop, it gets dumped in the cupboard, the software disappears on HPCs, they might renew the HPC, and then if the researcher's left, the code's not being um, supported, and there's, there's an issue with this. Um, they're basically pouring money down the drain because then people have to reinvent the software. And so they realized that they needed to um, invest in the people who were writing the software. And um, they coined this term research software engineer and they put out a call for fellowships. Um, and um, I saw this and thought, this exactly sums up um, my predicament applied. Obviously there were a lot of people who thought they were in the same position because there were 211 um, expressions of interest. And much to my continued continuing astonishment, I was one of the seven people who got one of the fellowships. And so, um, they're to do with improving the career path for people who are writing software in academia and raising awareness of the RSE role, so that's why I'm here today. Um, and also to um, upgrade my C++, because when you're on your own in a research group, it's hard to stay up to date. Um, so, where does that get to? Yeah, so, I then discovered that there's this um, body of people, um, the UK RSC Association, who are all basically research software engineers in academia. I um, can't remember what I've got on next. Yeah, and so there's this association, which as you can see has been and been growing. This only goes up to August 2018. Um, I couldn't find a more up-to-date one. But also, there are RSE groups being founded in universities. So um, the first couple were at UCL and Manchester, and they are um, basically groups of people who ideally are centrally funded so that um, they're not reliant on contracts and they can be taken and used in research projects where they need to have good software engineering. Um, and there's an association being launched soon. Last year, I had the privilege of chairing the RSC conference at Birmingham. Um, it's a really lively, friendly community. It will be there in Birmingham again next year. Um, and you can see we've got support from a great range of sponsors because they realise that the RSEs are the people who are going to be using their products and who are going to be um, taking those skills out to academia. And so I'll leave you with the software sustainability strapline, which is Better software, better research. <laughs>